Bill's Mafia. On tonight's Air Raid Hour, we will be breaking down all the first round options for the Buffalo Bills in the 2024 NFL Draft. What position will the Bills target? Who won't be on the board? Who will be on the board? How do we rank players across position groups? We attempt to answer all of these questions tonight. But first... Hour, a Cover One Network podcast. Here are your hosts, Judge Mathis and Tilt Money. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the Air Raid Hour presented by Cover One and Picasso's Pizza. My name is Steve Mathis. You can find me on Twitter at The Bills Guys. Joined as always by my co host, Dave Tilton. You can find him on Twitter at Tilt Money. And Dave, I guess I'm sorry to take the people away from this uh, elite eight game between Iowa and LSU going on right now. So if you're watching this on tape delay, as opposed to live, likely like you usually do totally understandable. Cause that was a heck of a game that I didn't, I didn't want to walk away from there at the end of the third quarter. No. Uh, and the basketball has been great this weekend. Shout out to my wolf pack in both the men's and the women's. Uh, being in the final four mm-hmm. in both uh, unlikely story in on the men's side women seem quite good obviously but uh yeah good good weekend for basketball and um yeah we're we're closing in it's april now right so the countdown mm-hmm. now is officially on to oh, the yeah. nfl draft we've already got rj melville coming in saying hey everyone i'm either wide receiver or jpj in the first if the board doesn't fall their way then trade down And that's what we're here to discuss tonight. We are here to discuss what should the Buffalo Bills do in the first round of the NFL draft. Over the course of this evening, we are going to talk about what positions the Bills could target. We are going to talk about should they trade up, should they trade down, who would they be trading up for, where should they target when trading down. And we're going to analyze players across position groups because Mm -hmm. we've had discussions about safeties and D tackles and wide receivers, but we've had those conversations in, in isolation. So now it's about comparing players across position groups, which is a little bit more challenging, but Dave, let's start tonight with a conversation about what position the bills could be targeting in round one. Mm -hmm. I look at it, obviously quarterback, we're not drafting quarterback in the first round running back. There are no consensus first round running backs, nor do we need one. So really the conversation starts with wide receiver. You need a future replacement for Stefan Diggs, a complement to what we currently have in the room now with Curtis Samuel and Matt Collins and Khalil Shakir. The Buffalo Bills, and I've been saying this for about a month now, and a lot of people are starting to catch on. Maybe offensive tackle could be a position that the Buffalo Bills go on, go go for it at 28. It's an historically deep draft class at offensive tackle as well. So maybe a guy who can come in and compete for the left guard spot in 2024 with David Edwards and also be the swing tackle and then slide into that right tackle role in 2025 if Spencer Brown leaves in free agency. The topic of conversation this week has been the interior of the offensive line. It's a position group that got paid in free agency. You can now maybe consider IOL a premium-ish position and David Edwards is hardly a stalwart there at left guard plus the Bills probably want insurance in the pivot for Connor McDermott so could the Bills go interior offensive line at 28 on defense edge you always need a guy who can get to the quarterback the Buffalo Bills could always look to add a premier edge rusher to the rotation they currently have interior defensive line you always want a guys who can disrupt from the interior And it's not exactly like our backups at the DT position are world beaters. I like Mm -hmm. Austin Johnson, but, you know, not exactly world beaters behind the two guys we currently have. And then the position that's going to get a lot of flack because safety, likely not a player outside Cooper DeGene worth the capital. But 
there is, you know, he is a guy who maybe could play safety early and then transition to corner. So Cooper DeGene could be a guy we have a conversation about tonight. And then cornerback. Rasul Douglas is 30. He was not extended this offseason, which is notable. He was restructured. Do they have faith in Elam? It's a premium position. The Bills could go cornerback at pick 28. And I think likely the city of Buffalo will burn to the ground if that happens. But I see a number of directions the Buffalo Bills could go. Wide receiver, offensive tech, interior defensive line, or some type of secondary player. So really, it, it is wide, wide open for the Buffalo Bills at pick 28. It's pretty wide open. I mean, the, the I, I, it's really hard when you start to get to that down to that sort of granular level where you talk about mm-hmm. like tackle versus guard or safety versus corner. And so, yes, there are values of of those positions that maybe differ from each other. And I think you talked about the the tackle class being deep. I mean, I did a mock today. Just you know, I didn't share it with anyone, but I got I picked Tyler Guyton for with the Bills pick the tackle at Oklahoma, knowing that he doesn't necessarily have the guard flex, but mm-hmm that ability to come in be your swing tackle from day one likely and and play right tackle predominantly at Oklahoma so could he be the right tackle of the future is that too rich so i kind of look at it this way let's group i group these positions together right so i'm like skill positions wide receiver okay tight mm-hmm. end back probably off the table then i go to the trenches defensive line or offensive line and then i go to the secondary, whether that's safety or corner and kind of group those together. And to me, I think that you have the wide receiver, you have, you have wide receiver, you have the lines either side, really kind of in that sort of one, a one B, whichever one you want to put, I'm not going to really get into an Mm -hmm. argument, whether you like would rather invest more in a wide receiver or someone from either line. But then I do think the secondary is probably a a B a a, a two right behind that Mm one a and one B behind wide receiver, behind either offensive or defensive line. Not ruling it out, by the way, as a possibility for the Bills at pick 28. But if I'm grouping things together, I'm kind of putting wide receiver as its own. Mm -hmm. I'm putting both defensive and offensive line together as like a 1A, 1B with wide receiver. And I'm kind of putting the secondary as a a number two, if you will. So I've definitely come around to the idea that if the Bills go attack the trenches, whether it's on the offensive line or the defensive line, I'm probably going to talk myself into mm-hmm. that being a pretty solid pick at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, there there are very few players this year that in this draft class that I don't like. Like, And I know everyone always, the running joke is I love everybody, right? Well, this year, like, I love some dudes, but I just like a lot of guys. Like, there is really no one that really turns me off that, should be a guy the Buffalo Bills target in the 28 range. Like me and you were morally opposed to Quentin Johnston last year. We wanted no part of QJ. And, you know, through one season, we turned out to be pretty correct. I don't really have a player that I feel so strongly I'm so opposed to like I did Quentin Johnston last year. But Mike um, Mike Malley guitar comes in with a great comment here. He says, I do believe that there will be a run on wide receivers starting at the top of the round two. This is what Brandon Bean has to keep in mind if he stays at 28 and doesn't trade back. Mm-hmm. We talk about that no man's land between pick 28 and 60. A lot of the guys that we love in this draft class are going to start flying off the board between picks 29 and 59, and it's going to sting. So if you're the Buffalo Bills and you're Brandon Bean, you got a job to do. You got to prognosticate. You got to figure out what the, t- the needs of other teams are and who is projected to go where in this draft and who's going to be sitting there for you around pick 60 when you have the chance to to pick in the second round because maybe you think to yourself just like um just like mike uh mally guitar did here wide receivers going to go quick in the second round we got to take one at 28 if we want the guy we want then wide receiver ends up being your first pick maybe you're like well we got 15 wide receivers we like one of them will be there at pick 60 feeling confident well maybe edge rusher or interior offensive lineman or Cooper DeGene. I'm not going to say any other secondary player, just Cooper DeGene. Like if someone like that is on the board, maybe the Buffalo Bills make that decision. So those are the things that the Buffalo Bills have to weigh. And the one thing that I keep coming back to, and again, maybe this is overthinking it, but when Brandon Bean was speaking at the, at the owner's meeting, and he says this all the time, I mean, the way Brandon Bean talks about the trenches, 
right? And the way he's invested, especially in the defensive line in the trenches, I really do. I'm starting to feel like pick 28 is going to either be a guy like Graham Barton, a guy like JPJ on the interior offensive line, or it's going to be a defensive lineman, a guy like Johnny Newton if he drops, a guy like Chop Robinson, a guy like Darius Robinson. I'm really starting to feel like the Buffalo Bills are zeroing in on some kind of big guy at pick number 28. Yeah, Chop Robinson, I think, is a very, very popular prediction, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that it's an it's a name that necessarily a lot of people have fallen in love with necessarily. Um, The lack of production at the college level does scare you a little bit. I think from a prediction standpoint, right, I think it. Mm -hmm. you could see it happening, right? You could see Chop Robinson or the other Robinson, Darius Robinson being the pick there at 28 would not shock me in the least if either one of those Mm -hmm. two Robinson guys were the pick, but um, you know, some of these guys that maybe aren't necessarily going to be um, the fan favorites of bills fans, right. For especially Mm -hmm. for those who want a wide receiver are going to maybe be the, be the types of players that we need to start talking about more because of this deep wide receiver class. But again, Mm -hmm. I think you, you hit it dead on, right? Brandon beans got to kind of toe that line between maybe being patient and sort of assuming that because of the class is deep wide receiver and he has guys he likes, he maybe can, can wait for a guy at 60, but you also don't want to miss out on a number of guys that you Mm -hmm. like just because you think the class is deep. And again, with the bills without a third round pick at the moment, they don't necessarily have the best ammo to move up in the second round if they want to significantly, but they could maybe Mm -hmm. a handful of spots by packaging a couple fourths. So I I don't know, right? We'll have to just wait and see. All right, let's start getting into the players. But before we get into the players and start comparing various different position groups and players that could be available in the first round, This show is sponsored by Picasso's Pizza. Four great locations in Williamsville, West Seneca, Lancaster, and Blaisdell. Buffalo Pizza since 1980. You can order online at picassospizza.net. And if you're an out-of-towner like us, you can even get it mailed to your home. And I can tell you from experience, it is just as good as getting it fresh from the restaurant. Again, that is picassospizza.net. All right, Dave, before we start our our, our conversation tonight, I want to sort of lay sort of the foundation for for what it is we're doing and i want to note a couple of things because we're going to be talking about a bunch of different names tonight guys who could be options for the buffalo bills at 28 some of the names might sound unrealistic that we're talking Mm -hmm. about at 28 right but so was dalton kincaid so there are going to be a couple of names that we're going to talk about tonight that Maybe they get into the 20s and Brandon Bean gets antsy as he talks about how he does sometimes. We're going to talk about guys that maybe we could jump up three, four, five, six spots to try to get in this draft. And there are some blue chip names that if we try to trade up for, if they slip into the 20s, the Buffalo Bills could get. And I'm kind of excited about some of those names because I really do want to add an instant impact blue chip player to this roster because I think that is what we need is we need a guy who can contribute and make an impact from day one. Yep. Some of the some of the names that we talk about tonight might sound like stretches, right? Oh, I think he's more of a second rounder, right? More more of stretches at 28. It's important to note NFL teams, they typically only have between 15 and 20 true first round grades every year. So if you're a top 40-ish prospect, you're in play in the back half of round one. It's mm-hmm. all about scheme fit, positional need, teams falling in love with guys and their character in the pre-draft process. We see every year guys go in the back half of the first round and we are like, wait, whoa, what? What? The the simulators had them going in the beginning of the third or the end of the second. It happens. So some of the names that we talk about tonight might seem like stretches at 28. And if in fact they are stretches at 28, well, just consider this an early preview of next week when we talk about the guys on day two. And then some of the guys we discussed tonight we're likely going to skip over them next week when we do this exercise for day two prospects. Consider them the front runners for pick 60 because if they're still on the board, the Buffalo Bills will probably try to pull the trigger. Osiris Torrance, just last year, when we did our day one show, we talked about Osiris Torrance. 
we didn't talk about Osiris Torrance at all in our day two show because we never re remotely thought Osiris Torrance would be available to us in mm -hmm. the second round. So that's sort of just an idea of where people's heads should be at as we have this conversation this evening. Yeah, I mean, once you start to get into the mid twenties, it becomes a bit of a, a all bets are off situation, right? You have got you have teams maybe looking to trade back mm -hmm. up into the first round to who knows what happens with the quarterback position in this draft. As many as five potentially could be going in the first round. We don't know all the tackles. Uh, you have all these tackles. You have uh, teams that maybe want to secure that possible 50 year option on a draft pick. Um, and so they'd rather take the guy then mm -hmm. and know that they could lock in a guy potentially for five years, even if it seems a little early and you have these teams at the end, picking at the end of the first round that are the good teams of the league, right? Um, for the most part, these are the best teams in the league as it stands year in and year out. And they're, they don't care necessarily that a guy, on someone else's board may be a second or early third rounder. If that's the mm -hmm. guy they want and they think that's a missing piece, they're going to go ahead and take them. And, and I really don't have a problem with that. The more years we've done this process, you and I together and kind of doing the draft prep, the less I worry about that so much now, especially as the bills have been picking in the late twenties. All right. So let's get it. Let's get into it now. And I got a little graphic here. So for those listening, listening on audio, I'll just sort of describe it to you. I start with the players unlikely to be on the board at 28, but these are players that the Buffalo Bills will definitely have an eye on. Obviously, at wide receiver, I would I, I wouldn't mind if the Bills went all in and went crazy to try to move up into the draft into the top 10 to grab a Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors or a Romo Duns, but it's probably just not going to happen. So, really, the name I have highlighted at wide receiver, a guy who, if he slips into the 20s, the Buffalo Bills should maybe have a conversation about trading up for. That is the other wide receiver at LSU, Brian Thomas Jr. Again, we talk about offensive linemen, maybe guys who can start at left guard and then transition to right tackle if Spencer Brown leaves in free agency. And if not, it just gives you a really good interior offensive line with one of these guys at left guard and Osiris Torrance at right guard. That's Troy Fatnu, that's Talise Fugawa, and that's J.C. Latham out of Alabama. Latham is a guy, I think, of the three most likely to fall unless the Chargers maybe trade back into the teens. I know the Chargers have been really looking at him. J.C. Latham is a guy who could play guard early, and then he can move out to, to right tackle later on. Those are three names to keep an eye on, with Latham being the guy that maybe the Buffalo Bills could target if he slips into the 20s. Edge defender, we've had many conversations on this show about Dallas Turner, Letty Latu, Jared Verse. Both Latu and Verse, it's not out of the realm of possibility. One of those guys gets into the 20s and the Buffalo Bills can maybe possibly trade up for them. Interior defenders, again, two guys we've had a ton of conversations about. Byron Murphy II, Jerzon Johnny Newton out of Illinois. If one of those two guys gets into the 20s, maybe you're the Buffalo Bills and you have a conversation. And then last but not least, Terry and Arnold out of Alabama. I think he just fits the mold of what the Buffalo Bills look for in at a cornerback position. If there was one cornerback, the Buffalo Bills were going to take at 28. I think it's Terry and Arnold if he somehow miraculously slips. And I also think he might tempt Brandon Bean if he slips into the 20s. Luckily for us, I don't think that's a possibility. I think he's going to go somewhere in the top 20, 22 picks. But then Cooper DeGene's got that safety corner flex. He can be a safety for you to start. He can maybe slide into the cornerback position in the future. So there's a lot of intrigue around Cooper DeGene, even though I think a lot of people in Bill's Mafia don't want a secondary player. Cooper DeGene can be the best of both worlds. He can be your safety now. He can be your cornerback later. So of those names that I have highlighted, Dave, who sticks out to you of, as like a guy you'd be willing to sacrifice one of those fourth round picks to maybe move up three, four spots for? I mean, to be honest, I think maybe outside of the two secondary guys, unless you're like mm -hmm. super sold on them, I think all those guys you have highlighted in yellow are potentially guys that I'd be willing to move up for. Maybe J.C. Latham mm -hmm. just because of how deep this class is at tackle. And I know he play, has played right guard a couple years ago, and he's played tackle the last few years. That would be maybe a little bit of one that I would need convincing. But those edge guys versus um, those interior guys, Newton and Murphy, um, Latu, I would be for sure willing to take the risk on a guy like mm -hmm. Latu as well, um, with the red flags because the medical red flags, just because of 
his possible upside and the fact that probably in a in a situation where he didn't maybe have some of those medical red flags, he'd be a surefire top 10 pick mm -hmm. in this class. So essentially, really all of those guys you had highlighted outside of maybe the secondary guys yeah. and and uh, Latham, I'd be maybe willing to move up a couple spots. Now, what I will say is philosophically, just for this draft, I am generally not team trade up, right? Mm -hmm. I, I am more of a stay put, trade back type of guy try to trade back and then maybe try to acquire a third round pick somehow in this draft. However, if you could get your hands on a verse, if you could get your hands on a Johnny Newton, like that's pretty, that's pretty appealing I, to me. I think that's a really good point you make too, because I think in March and in April, when we talk about the draft, everyone's team trade back because everyone wants to accumulate picks and everyone wants all their favorite prospects. They want to bundle as many prospects as they can. But then you get to the actual draft day and you have all of these surprises. Like what if Michael Penix goes to the Raiders at 13? Mm. What if like the Broncos like go crazy and take like a Spencer Rettlig or a Bo Nix? Like what if another quarterback goes or more quarterbacks than we think go? What happens if like a different position or different players go off the board and you have Brian Thomas Jr. staring at you in the face? You have JC Latham staring you at the face. You have Cooper DeGene staring you in the face. And all it's going to take is like a fourth rounder and maybe, maybe it, like icing on the cake, a, a pick next year, like a middle round pick next year. You have a chance to add a blue chip player. And I'm going to go back to this chart here. I think everyone I have highlighted is a blue chip player. Brian Thomas Jr. has the potential oh, yeah. to be Brian a blue Thomas chip was a that's that's a, I forgot mm -hmm. he was on, was on the list for yeah. sure. He'd be he'd be on my uh, JC Latham, list. I think, can be like a le legit a pro bowl caliber guard. And he's a guy you could put at right tackle and be pretty good. Darn good. There as well. Tried and, you know, battle tested at Alabama blue chip player. In my opinion, fringe blue chip player, but blue chip player. Letty Latu, Jared first blue chip pass rushers, Byron Murphy, Johnny Newton, blue chip interior defenders, Terry and Arnold blue chip corner, Cooper DeGene, blue chip corner safety. Those are instant impact players. With the exception of Terry and Arnold, where it would you would struggle to find uh, a, a way to get him onto the field. So let's take him out of the equation. Latham is day one starting left guard. Brian Thomas is day one starting wide receiver too. Cooper DeGene is day one starting free safety. You can now have Mike Edwards as a backup strong safety, free safety nickel, right? Johnny, New Johnny Newton and Byron Murphy are instant impact part of the interior defense rotation. You're putting them next to Odd Oliver in pass rushing situations, and they are impacting the quarterback. Letty Latu, Jared Verse, they are instantly a huge part of your edge rotation getting after the quarterback. Every single one of these guys are instant impact players. And if you have to give up a fourth-round pick this year and a fourth-round pick next year or a fifth-round pick next year to move up three, four spots to secure one of these guys, like I'm not saying go crazy and get into the teens because that'll cost you. Yep. You have a chance to add a blue chip player. I'm game because a lot of the guys that we're going to talk about in that second tier, I like those players a lot. And I think they will all have a role on this football team, but they are not the blue chip players that I have highlighted on that screen right there. Yeah. And I think uh, a lot of fans would probably be open to that. We have the two fourth rounders this year. You're looking mm -hmm. at least as of now that you're going to, again if the bills don't get screwed with the formula looking like you're mm -hmm. going to get like a fourth and a fifth comp pick next year as it stands so you're going to have picks to play with um you know the the question will be is like does brandon bean want to see himself getting into the third round does he want to have three picks between rounds one and round two somehow in this draft if he's okay with only having two picks between days one and day two, then yes, I think you're mm -hmm. okay with that. If he is not okay with only having two picks yeah. on day one or day two, then you probably don't see a trade up in the first round mm -hmm. because he's going to need to package those fourths that he has, those fifths that he has, if he wants to get into yeah. the third round this year. So that to me, I think is the question. And obviously it's hard to know exactly how the board's going to fall, but if Brandon Bean really has a strong top 100, 120 guys, mm -hmm. let's say that he loves, he may want to try to go back into the third round and be content with whatever falls mm -hmm. to him. 
at 28. All right, let's take a look at this second tier. These are guys who could realistically be on the board for the Buffalo Bills at 28. At wide receiver, I have the two guys from Texas, Adnay Mitchell, Xavier Worthy. I have the wide receiver from Georgia, Lad McConkey. I have the wide receiver from Florida State, Keon Coleman. And I have the wide receiver from South Carolina, Xavier Leggett. Some people might disagree with having some of these guys on here, but again, I think these guys are top 40-ish prospects in this draft. Maybe some people want to add like a Troy Franklin to this list. I chose not to, but maybe you do. Um, I went more of guys who could maybe have more than a, you know, just deep down the field threat role that I think uh, Troy Franklin's going to be relegated to. I think these guys are more all purpose type of guys. So I put them on the list on the interior of the office of line. You have powers Johnson out of Oregon. You have Graham Barton out of Duke. You have Jordan Morgan out of Arizona on the defensive line at edge, you have a pretty polarizing prospect in Chop Robinson out of Penn State. We'll have a conversation about him in a minute. You have Darius Robinson out of Missouri, another guy who's sort of a polarizing prospect for the exact opposite reasons that Chop Robinson is a polarizing prospect. You got the late riser, Braden Fisk, uh, at defensive tackle. And then a guy I just think the Buffalo Bills would really like in the cornerback position, and that is Kool-Aid McKistry out of Alabama. Again, I don't think we go corner, but if we do, I think a guy like McKistry would be someone the Buffalo Bills would be zeroing in on around pick number 28. So Dave, just quickly taking a look at what is available to the Buffalo Bills there. If you had to say pick two or the three of the names out of your hat that you like from the, that group of guys, who are you taking? Yeah, it's a good question. I throw TJ Tampa and Mike Saint Saint into that cornerback mm -hmm. list as well, um, just to round that out. I, I look, I I think Chop Robinson and Darius Robinson have to be uh, top of mind for Bills fans, as I said at the mm -hmm. onset of the show. Just given um, you have Chop, who's the polarizing figure, as you mentioned, great athletic prowess. What can you make out of him? in a rotation where he wouldn't necessarily have to be the guy that's playing 70, 80% of snaps. Is that going to be advantageous for him at the next mm -hmm. level? You have a guy like Darius Robinson. Then on the other hand, who has that inside outside flex, who maybe you can get two birds with one stone with a player like that. The bills haven't had great luck with tweener type guys in the past mm -hmm. and kind of fitting into their rotation. There's been guys that they've had that have gone elsewhere and have played well. That gives me a little hesitation for a guy like Darius Robinson. Love the player. Mm -hmm. I wonder how the Bills would best use him. Is that the way you want to spend your first pick on a tweener guy where you're not exactly sure where he's going to end up? So for me, if you don't mind bringing up that, bringing up that chart one more time, yeah. um, I think for me, I look at the, the guys in it, the, the three guys, I think, um, at the bottom of that wide receiver list, Lad McConkey, Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett. I think the non the the two Texas guys are interesting to me. I'm mm -hmm. a little lower probably on AD Mitchell than others. Xavier Worthy, I think to me, I, I've really liked him all along. I just I feel right now that there are uh, there are better fits for the Bills mm -hmm. at that position than Xavier Worthy. Redundant Namely, skill set. Yeah, they, and, and, and that's not room. a knock on him as a player. I think he's fantastic, mm -hmm. and I think that in the right situation, maybe the Bills are the right situation. He thrives, but those receivers, I think all of them really are probably in play, and the linemen, I think, can't be – the offensive linemen can't be uh, undersold, right? J, uh, JPJ, a lot of people are coming around to him as the center of the future. Maybe you are able to slide – kind of McGovern back over to left guard. People mm -hmm. aren't leaving the smoke around him moving to center. You get your center of the future in JPJ. You relegate David Edwards back to that sort of first backup off the bench guard position. That maybe sticks in Bill's fans' minds because we've missed out on Creed Humphrey a couple years back. Granted, that was a second round player, but the thought process may be a little bit the same, right? Mitch Morse isn't here anymore, so... Do the Bills really have that full mm -hmm. faith in Connor McGovern to be the center of the future? So I'm interested in JPJ. It's interesting to hear some of the reports on him from some of the from of the people on the scouting side saying like the the draft draft community is a mm -hmm. little higher on him maybe than the NFL GM community, which I thought yeah. was a little bit interesting. Um, 
But uh, but in reality, like all of those guys, I could talk myself into as being a justifiable pick at 28. So, mm-hmm. um, but I lean kind of maybe more towards the the line in in with those with those players. Yeah, I'll tell you what, like the defensive linemen, I've come around on both, but that would be one where I'm like, okay, I get it, but I wouldn't necessarily be happy about it. I do think that there is a, a, a huge difference between Darius Robinson and Boogie Basha. When you look at Darius Robinson, two inches taller, 10 pounds heavier, his arms are two inches longer, his hands are an inch bigger. I think you're getting a different player. I think some of the warts with Boogie Basham were the small hands, the short arms, etc. I think you are getting a better athlete in Darius Robinson than Boogie Basham was. So I will, I will say that. And you mentioned it, and we've talked about this in shows previous. Darius Robinson might be able to get you the best of both worlds. We talk about, oh, I don't want to take a defensive lineman because they're not going to get enough snaps. Well, Darius Robinson can take snaps on the edge, and he can take snaps behind Ed Oliver. So when you combine edge snaps and defensive tackle snaps, now all of a sudden you have a guy who's playing 50% of the game, right, to a number that might be um, more – easier for for you to to swallow you know chop robinson i'm coming around on chop robinson i got in my notes here he just seems like somebody the buffalo bills would zero in on he is a good edge setter um he's got that elite first step and he's got really high upside i feel like that's something that the buffalo bills will look at and they'll be like well He's got like a really, like he's got a nice floor because of just how good of an athlete he is. And he's got that elite first step. And we just don't have that in our pass rush arsenal right now. And, you know, at worst, he can set the edge and just be a solid defensive end. So a guy like Chop Robinson, I think, is someone the Bills would gravitate themselves towards. I mean, it's. Yeah, go go ahead. Go oh, ahead. sorry. Grant, and then Graham Barton is the other guy. Like JPJ is fine. I think we all like JPJ. I know Pro Anth. I know Eric. They talk about him, or they will be talking about him in the film room because they love him. The Bills take him. No brainer. I love Graham Barton because I think Graham Barton's got flexibility to move all over the offensive line. I think he's somebody that Aaron Cromer will attach himself to. Austin Gunn, the Buffalo Bills assistant offensive line coach, was at the Duke Pro Day looking at up close and personal Graham Barton. He's a guy who could slide in at left guard. He's a guy who could take over at center. If you don't feel comfortable with a guy like Connor McGovern at center, but I just come back to the wide receivers. I really do. When looking at this list, I come back to the wide receivers, AD Mitchell. If the bills draft him and they're comfortable with him, I'm fine with it too. I mean, the physical profile, we all know about the physical profile, the upside. He's got that mm-hmm. alpha body, right? Yep. He's got five touchdowns and five career college football playoff games. He's a big play guy. I, I think the Buffalo Bills might have questions about his work ethic and how he takes plays off and all the various different things. And if he can't answer those questions, I think the Buffalo Bills will shy away from an AD Mitchell. If they do, they do, right? Zane with Xavier Worthy. Like, I think the frame might be an issue for the Buffalo Bills. Now, I think he's a really good, well-rounded football player. But again, Brandon Bean talked about having too many similar, maybe body types, too many similar styles in the room. I think the Buffalo Bills are looking elsewhere for the wide receivers. And that's why at pick 28, if all those top guys are gone, I think my top three in order would be Xavier Leggett, Ladd McConkie, and Keon Coleman. Mm -hmm. Like People will say Xavier Leggett is a stretch, but to me, He's got football character, which I think the Bills will fall in love with. If you look into Xavier Leggett's story, he's got a great story, right? He's got high-pointing ability, which is not something no one else other than maybe what Mac Hollins in the Buffalo Bills wide receiver room has, a true go-up-and-get-it guy. I don't think I've seen a go-up-and-get-it guy like Xavier Leggett in multiple draft classes. He's got size, so he can impact the run game. He can play on the boundary, and he's got speed for his size. And he is great yards after the catch, which is something that Joe Brady has clearly shown an interest in. And on top of that, you have the new kickoff rules, and he was a pretty solid kick returner before he was he blew up as a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. So Xavier Leggett checks a ton of boxes. Lad McConkey, 
Oh, sorry. You can keep going with. I was just saying, I agree with your order that you had those three. Mm. So yeah. And Lad McConkey, Eric and Anther are about to do a film room on him tomorrow. I suggest tuning in, right? Their pro comp for Lad McConkey is Emmanuel Sanders, a wide receiver. The bills were literally head over heels for and tried to acquire multiple times before they finally got him. So if the bills were in love with Emmanuel Sanders once and see Emmanuel Sanders and Lad McConkey, that could tell you that that's someone the Buffalo Bills would target at pick 28. And then Keon Coleman, if you put his Raz up against Gabe Davis's Raz, I just look at those two, and I think if I'm Brandon Bean, you look at Keon Coleman and you just see a more explosive Gabe Davis, maybe a more agile, right, a less stiff Gabe Davis. And that fits the mold of the missing piece in the room. And that maybe gives you the X wide receiver, number one wide receiver ceiling that Gabriel Davis never had because of his limited route tree. So between Leggett for the reasons I stated, McConkey for the reasons I stated, and Keon Coleman for the reasons I stated, to me, I think those are the three guys that I really zero in on at pick 28 at the Buffalo Bills have their minds set on a wide receiver. Yeah, and I think it comes down to, for me, like, I want, I don't want to say Coleman's a distant third, but mm-hmm. he does. I, I'm not going to discount the bills possible interest in a guy like that, given that he has made some spectacular catches throughout his career. And the bills are obviously looking for a playmaker and Coleman brings that mm-hmm. profile with him. Leggett and McConkey. It's, do you want a guy that can go up and high point the ball? Great with yards after catch, et cetera. Or do you want a guy that is a natural separator, which is what McConkey is, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that Leggett can't separate, but like profile wise, they're not the same type of guy, right? And so we know we've seen in the past Josh Allen has really succeeded well with guys who can separate. And that's why he succeeded well with a guy like Emmanuel Sanders, mm-hmm. right? Because the, the comp to McConkey, I think, is appropriate. Yeah. But he's also never really had that go up and get it guy, that high pointer, that physical freak Mm -hmm. on the boundary to play opposite of Stefan Diggs. And with you have a guy like Shakir coming on, you have a guy like Dalton Kincaid roaming the middle of the field as well. Smooth operator in the middle of the field, getting open. You have James Cook working the middle of the field a little bit as well as a receiver out of the backfield. Leggett to me brings something different to the room than what the Bills have. And Diggs obviously does it all. He's a separator. We know that. So to me, it's like I kind of like Leggett's profile for the room, but I'm never going to be a, a upset mm-hmm. about adding another separator a, at the position. So it like I think I think either or I would be pretty damn happy with yeah. if the Bills came along I'm, with one of those guys. I know it'll make our guy Randy happy, but I'm really I'm really just I'm sold the most on Xavier Leggett. Because as Roy Collins said, he's got that speed and size to be the deep field separator to take the top off of defense. At the same time, he's got that high pointing ability. At the same time, you can use him on like dump offs and you can use him on like those like short throws and he can get you yards after the catch. He's got that body to be big, physical and aggressive and do the pass blocking things you want a wide receiver to do. He can help you in the return game. Like I just. He just checks so many freaking boxes for me. The one thing that is obviously the biggest concern is the fact that he did not, nothing clicked until sort of his final year. He had a a late breakout age, which is not a good indicator for future success. But at the same time, if you go back and you look at his story, motorcycle accident, parents dying, COVID, all of coaching changes, all of these various different obstacles that stood in Xavier Leggett's way from breaking out at a younger age. So there are excuses or reasons why it took him a longer time to break out than others. He was also a high school quarterback. He wasn't a high school wide receiver. There's just a number of things uh, in Xavier Leggett's background. If you look at that in context, right? If you look at it in context and you don't just look at the box score, right? It makes sense. And you're excited about the player. But again, there will be some teams that just, are not interested in a guy like Xavier Leggett because of one, one year of production in five years, as as Mike Malley guitar said. So, Dave, I think it's time for us to maybe fire up the PFF uh, mock draft simulator. You want to do that on your end? Sure. Uh, yeah, here? I can do it. Yeah, sure. So, so what we're going to do tonight to close out the show, the final 20 or so minutes here, 
is we are going to do a full first round mock draft. We're going to start with the first pick. We're going to work our way all the way to pick number 32. And in this exercise, what we're going to do, and I have a list of all the, I went over every other, I went over every team's depth chart, Dave. So I, 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 I've sort of to in tune a little bit uh, with, with what I think all of these teams need. We're going to do a first round mock draft and we're going to see how the board falls Mm -hmm. in our mock draft and where the Buffalo Bills could ultimately look to trade up. Does anyone slip? Who's available at 28 if we don't make the decision to trade up? And then are there some trade down options if we don't like the way the board looks? So that's what we're going to be rolling with this evening. And we're going to start with the first pick. Uh, there, There will be trades. There will be trades in here. So. I think at some point, Dave, the Minnesota Vikings are going to be trading up for J.J. McCarthy. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I would I would think so. Maybe the uh, Denver Broncos make a move. Yeah. We'll, see. we'll see. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit here. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure the Atlanta Falcons are going to try to trade out of their spot too. So uh, we can have these conversations as we get to the pick. But let's start with the first pick. I think yeah. it's pretty obvious who the Chicago Bears are going to take with the first pick, and that is going to be Caleb Williams out of the University of Southern California. With the second pick, Dave, I don't know where your head is at, but mm-hmm. to me, I think this is Drake May. I think I think there's some smoke around Jaden Daniels. I think there's some smoke about J- around J.J. McCarthy. I think at the end of the day, if you are Adam Peters, if you are Dan Quinn, you ultimately look at it and you make the decision to go with Drake May. But are you opposed? Do you think it's going to be Jaden Daniels? What are your thoughts here? Uh, I did a couple first round mocks today to just kind of get my, my feet wet here and try to like what do what you did and kind of mm-hmm. analyze the depth charts, whatever I, in both, in both, uh, ones I did, I did Drake may here. So, yeah. So, uh, I agree with that. So let's go with Drake may with the second pick. And now that leads us to new England. New England's got some holes to fill. They obviously have Jacoby Brissett at quarterback, Bailey Zappi at quarterback. If they want to go a year and and try again at the quarterback position next year. Wide receiver is a huge need. That wide receiver room is the middest of mid I've ever seen in my entire life. And they're right now sans a left tackle. They don't really have much in terms of a left tackle. Me personally, Dave, I know history would indicate that the New England Patriots might try to trade back out of the spot. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, I think it's a new age in new England. I personally think, they stick here and they take a quarterback and yep. they they roll with that quarterback into the future. But what are your thoughts on, on pick number three here and what New England could possibly do? Yeah, I've seen some mocks where they've taken Marvin Harrison Jr. And I'm just like, what like what is the benefit of that? Who's throwing mm-hmm. him the ball? Like you don't really have a vision, I feel like, for what you're doing with the team. So like you gotta kind of reset here. Like mm-hmm. it's not gonna be Mac Jones starting. It can't be right. If they're serious, they got a new head coach to me. I like to mock a quarterback here to the Patriots. I like to mock Jaden Daniels to the Patriots here um, in the ones I've done, but I could be convinced otherwise. Uh, I'm in agreement with you. So let's go Jaden Daniels pick number three. And that puts Arizona on the clock. And I'll tell you what, I live out here in Phoenix. Trading back has, is not a very popular uh, decision with a lot of people. Uh, in the Valley right now. And I'll tell you what, it, I think it would take a King's ransom to get the Arizona Cardinals to really trade the fourth overall pick. I think it would, it would take Minnesota offering 11. It would take them offering 23. I think it would take them offering a first next year and maybe a first the year after that. I really do think Arizona is going to ask a steep price because if Arizona trades too far back, they run the risk of losing Marvin Harrison Jr., Romo Dunes, and Malik Neighbors. Mm-hmm. And the Arizona Cardinals need to walk out of this draft with one of those three players. Yep. So to me, I think they stay and take Marvin Harrison Jr. But do you think there's anyone like the New York Giants who might try to trade up for a J.J. McCarthy here into slot number four? Uh, I think that only happens if the Cardinals are getting or if there's competition to kind of pull up into that pick because mm-hmm. if anything i feel like the giants might be trying to move out of their pick at six 
if they're going to continue with this Daniel Jones experiment, see who's maybe willing to come up to pick mm-hmm. six and take a quarterback. For me, if I'm the Arizona Cardinals here, Hollywood Brown's gone. Uh, you have Greg Dortch. You have Mike Wilson. Mike Wilson. <laughs> you need to add a bona fide wide receiving mm-hmm. threat. Like you obviously are a couple year, you know, you're a year removed from not having mm-hmm. DeAndre Hopkins or Hollywood Brown. And like this room needs a rebuild. I- you're going to build around Kyler Murray I, continue I, to, it, it seems like so. And I think Michael Bidwell has more of a say in this organization than people think as much as they're trying to sort of make it seem like he has less of a say now that Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury are gone. But I think Michael Bidwell, who owns the Arizona Cardinals, who is very much a, a control freak with that franchise, is going to think back to what happened when they took Larry Fitzgerald and the success that Larry Fitzgerald brought the franchise and the prestige that Larry Fitzgerald brought the franchise. And I don't think he's going to want to pass up on what he believes is a generational wide receiver prospect. So I'm game to go here with Marvin Harrison Jr. If you are. Yep. Let's do it to keep things moving along here. All right. So that leads us now to the Los Angeles chargers. To me, this is the trade spot. Mm -hmm. I think this is where either Minnesota, Las Vegas or Denver, maybe the New York giants are going to come up and they are going to select their quarterback. So to me, I think the team with the most ammunition is the Minnesota Vikings. I think that makes the most sense here. 11, 23 and next year's first to move up to spot number five. Makes sense to me. Uh, why did I say this will not be accepted? Yeah. You can just force a trade. I Uh, think I think that's reasonable. Yeah, I think that makes sense too. The only thing you might sit mm-hmm. here and say is like Keenan Allen's gone, yep. Mike Williams is gone, Quinton Johnston is your de facto number one wide receiver on this team. Mm-hmm. You if you're the Chargers new head coach in John Harbaugh, or I'm sorry, Jim Harbaugh. Yep. And yes, I know you hate wide receivers, Jim Harbaugh, and I know you want to just run the he, ball a million times a game, he, but he had a conversation at the combine, which makes me think it has convinced me that he's going to take an offensive lineman with his first pick because the conversation that he had at the combine, he was like, Hey, you got to think about it this way. What positions in football are not dependent on other positions to be successful? The offensive line, the only five spots in football where they are not dependent on other people to be successful. Whereas wide receivers, quarterbacks, running backs, they're dependent on the offensive line in order to be successful. I mean, Jim Harbaugh really laid out what I think is his formula or his foundation for rebuilding the Los Angeles Chargers. I think they trade this big. I think they take an offensive tackle, um, you know, at 11. And I think they use that 23rd pick maybe to add a wide receiver or a, a, another position of need uh, in this draft, just not Romo Dunes or Malik Neighbors. That's my personal opinion of, of what I think is going to happen here. Well, let's just do it because, I mean – we're not going to make everyone happy as mm-hmm. with these mantras go. <laughs> and so Minnesota is now on the clock and we figure with them sliding up ahead of the New York giants, they would take JJ McCarthy here. I imagine would be the selection. Mm-hmm. We got Justin Tindall coming in with the super chat. I always appreciate you. Justin, he says trade down round one for a third rounder. Cause watching the cover one draft coverage, uh, I will feel for you guys having to wait 66 picks before <laughs> the bills are being on the clock, but maybe trade day three capital for maybe another third. We are both more, more than happy to trade down. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight. When we get to pick number 28, what are the Buffalo bills going to do when we get to pick number 28? So that's something that we are going to discuss is trade down a best scenario based on what we see on the board. The New York Giants here, I have quarterback, wide receiver, offensive line, IDL, cornerback, and safety as needs for the New York Giants. I think they go wide receiver here. Pretty much it's Malik Neighbors or Romo Dunes. Who do you think they are going to take here, Dave? You can pick whichever. Well, it's in, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think consensus-wise would tell you Neighbors is probably mm-hmm. the, the higher guy, but then you look at the room they have. They have Jalen Hyatt. They have Darius Slayton. They have Wendell Robinson. Does a guy like Odunes fit maybe better mm-hmm. into that room? I kind of agree with Jay Davis here that mm-hmm. Odunes fits better, but would they actually pass up on a guy like Malik Neighbors here? That would be a ballsy move by Joe Shine. And I don't know if he can do it, but let's do I it. Would, 
I would take O'Doons here Let's if I was it. the Giants. All I right. am in agreement. Let's do it. Let's do and it. Then, Let's can we all agree it. Joe Alt is going to be a Tennessee Titan? Yeah, that's like <laughs> seems like a layup to me. Yeah, so there you go. I did. Uh, I did toy with them taking Brock Bowers uh, in an cool. earlier one, but uh, <laughs> but we'll go with Joe Alt here to keep things moving along. And this that brings you to the Atlanta Falcons at pick um, number eight. So Atlanta's biggest need is wide receiver and edge. And I don't even know if wide receiver is really that big of a need for them now with Darnell Mooney and Drake London and Rondell Moore. Um, so to me, it's either a wide receiver or an edge rusher. That's why I think they are game for a trade up. But at this point, the trade up would be for to jump ahead of Chicago for Malik Neighbors. Do you think there's a team here who would look to trade up to maybe try to get Malik Neighbors? Maybe, maybe the the Los Angeles Chargers now here try to get back in and try to get Malik Neighbors. I think that is reasonable. Could the Jets try to get mm -hmm. ahead of Chicago one spot to get Neighbors as well? I think that yeah. is also a possibility. With the Jets having multiple needs, seems like there's discontent between what Joe Douglas mm -hmm. wants versus what Robert Sala wants. Joe Douglas is ultimately going to be the one to pull the trigger. They have Garrett Wilson. They got Mike Williams. Aaron Rodgers could feast with a guy like Malik mm -hmm. neighbors. Um, so I could see the jets also trying to get ahead yeah. of Chicago here as well. So um, you make the choice here. Do you want to be the jets trading up or do you want it to be the chargers trading up? Well, the chargers, the chargers have a lot of needs. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that the Jets don't, but I feel like to feels keep like things, a Jets move. Feels like it, a Jets move. I just feel like to keep things a little mm -hmm. interesting, let's have the Jets trade up here. Uh okay. this makes me sad. I'm gonna puke. I know, but like we we got we just gotta mm -hmm. let's see the Jets. So this probably to move up two spots would cost them probably their second round, like still probably cost them mm -hmm. their second round. Pull up the value chart. So in order to move up these so in the two comment spots, section saying, God, I hope I would hate the Jets getting neighbors. That's part of why I'm doing this is kind of like it's about it's about 40. It's about 40, 50 points. They'd have to make up the Jets do not have a second round pick. Is that correct? I think it's a third here. I think it's 10, that, 72 for eight. Yeah. And, and then 72 for eight would be would be what it takes to get Malik neighbors in the New York Jets uniform. They're all in, man. They are all in. All right, let's force that one up. And the Jets will take neighbors here. Much to the chagrin of all of us, but we're uh, doing it. It's, just like, it's not real. So Chicago is now finding themselves in a very precarious position, right? They got their quarterback. Do you go Brian Thomas Jr. here? Do you take one of the three edge rushers here? And I also think IDL is a need for them. I think a guy like Johnny Newton, who's from Illinois, is a guy that maybe the Chicago Bears could consider here at pick number nine. I think it's either an interior defender like a Newton or a Murphy, or it's Brian Thomas Jr. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, you take a quick look at their, you know, outside of DJ Moore, they did bring in Keenan Allen. So they mm -hmm. have obviously Keenan Allen to kind of be that possession type receiver to complement DJ Moore. They still have Tyler Scott who they drafted last year. Vilas Jones obviously hasn't blossomed into an offensive threat. It's not going to be Brock Bowers. Most likely they signed Gerald Everett and they have Cole. You, still. you look at Seattle, right? Where Shane Waldron came from Matt calf, lock it, you know, um, Jackson Smith and Jigba. They were not afraid to draft wide receivers in Seattle. Maybe Shane Wal Waldron has the, the, the room, you know, here, the ear of the room here, and maybe they go wide receiver here. I don't know. What are your thoughts? <sighs> I don't know. I look at this Chicago team and I feel like they really could use help at IDL or edge. They have mm -hmm. Montez Sweat on one side, Demarcus Walker on the other, Gervon Dexter, who they drafted last yeah. year in the second round, and Andrew Billings from Vegas. But man, it would be tough, I think, for them to to pass on either a Johnny Newton or a Latu mm -hmm. or even a Jared Verse here, I feel like could be in play for them. Um, so I say... I, you know, it's up to you, but I think Newton or Murphy could be in play here. Mm, I, I say we go with the Illinois, Illinois guy coming home. Mm -hmm. Just send him over, send him to Chicago. Let's go Johnny Newton to the Bears here. Right. I know it's, I know it's a little bit, 
you know, maybe uh, out of left I like field. it. But we'll right. go with it. We'll go yeah. with it. And that's Atlanta. And I think Atlanta's got to go edge rusher, right? Yeah. Like Atlanta to me has to take an edge here. I would say Dallas Turner probably makes the most sense for them. Yep. We take a quick look at Atlanta's depth chart on the edge. They've got Zach Harrison, who's a third rounder last year. And Ebiketti, uh, who was a second rounder in 2022, but not much pass rush mm -hmm. pop on this team. So I agree with you. Edge makes a lot of sense, I think, for Atlanta here. So I think what Dallas Turner probably for yeah. them. Let's go with it. Now we are back to the Chargers. Mm -hmm. and so for the Chargers, I think it's going to be one of, I think it's one of uh, Fatno, uh, Fua Fuaga, or Latham here. I think it's one of those three guys because I think it's someone that you can play at right tackle. I think it's someone you can play along the defensive interior. I don't think Olu Fashnow, who I think is mostly a left tackle, is going to interest them because they have Rashawn Slater. So to me, it's going to be Fontenau, Fuaga, or Latham. Those are my guys for the, the Chargers here. Or they could wait to take a tackle in the 20s, and they could um, they could roll Brian Thomas Jr. here and, and get that wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, I think Fuaga makes sense here for the Chargers, mm -hmm. right? You've got Slater. Um, and on the other side right now, they've got penciled in Trey Pipkins as the right tackle. So yeah. kind of pairing Slater on one bookend with Fuada makes a lot of sense. You mentioned what Jim Harbaugh mm. had said. So I like Fuaga here for the Chargers, if you're okay with it. Yep, yeah, I'm good. All right. Now we come Broncos. to the Denver Broncos. I'll tell you what. I was looking at their depth chart. The Broncos are pretty good outside of quarterback. They <laughs> like, are. And their quarterback is Jared Stidham right now. So quarterback and edge rusher were the two positions I had. So I would say Letty Latu would be probably the number one to me guy that you would pencil in here. I think he gives them a little bit of pass rush pop. He mm -hmm. seems like the kind of edge rusher that they would uh, like in that system. Uh, but we could start talking Michael Penix here if you want. But I think it's likely a lot to. This is this is steep for Penix. I think the Broncos. Um, I like their roster, but I do mm -hmm. think that you know they signed Malcolm Roach, obviously in free agency, a, a favorite of ours from a free agency standpoint. But they need someone. They really need someone who can get to the quarterback more consistently. They had they drafted Nick Benito in twenty two. They drafted Baron mm -hmm. Browning in twenty twenty one. They don't really have that sort of. I would say premier guy rushing the passer. So I would be very supportive of them taking law two here. If it was me. All right. Law two off the board. All right. Another sad day. I know. All right. I say for the sake of experimental sake, I say we've put Michael panics to the, to the Raiders. Okay. I, he seems like a guy who, who would vibe with, uh, Antonio Pierce and, and that Rams culture there, or not Rams, excuse me, Raiders culture there. I've heard some things from people I trust that like Penix and the Raiders are kind of vibing. So for the sake of the experiment, let's just put Penix to the Raiders here and talk about the ramifications if four quarter, five quarterbacks go before the Buffalo Bills even. All right. You know, pick. All right. We'll go with it. First real. Maybe shocker. I guess maybe Johnny, <laughs> Newton, Johnny Newton going top yeah. 10 movies a little bit of a shocker, but okay, whatever. All right. It's the, all for fun, people. It's all for fun. The Saints, I have wide receiver, offensive tackle, defensive line. They could go edge rusher. They could go interior. So uh, I I think they're probably going to go off to tackle. Ryan Ramchek is a guy who might have to medically retire. I think Olu Fash now makes a lot of sense from Penn State to uh, uh, to the Saints, but uh, F Fatnu makes sense as well. So. It, it, it's sort of up to you here, but I think tackle for the Saints here. Tackle made sense for the Saints. I'm also wondering, is there anyone on the board that could be of interest for someone to trade up and snag mm -hmm. here? Um, could maybe the Lions be looking at a guy like Quinion Mitchell to kind of come mm -hmm. up and move up? Could someone who needs a tight end uh, maybe look to come up and go for pick a guy like Brock Bowers? Um that could be interesting, yeah. but, uh, yeah, I mean, 
I think tackle makes sense. We could have him go in Font- Fontanu here, Fontanu here. Um, mm-hmm. If that's who you like, I, I'm I'm good with that. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Colts. Damn, maybe we should have put Brock Bowers to the Chargers. And then I was thinking like, the 20s. Yeah, but I also think uh, there's a couple teams coming up here that could like. Yeah, man, he's gonna like, be. He's gonna be a Bengal. Like I think Bengal or, S- or Seattle could be an interesting yeah. option for him. I think uh, Indy to me is Quinion Mitchell. I think they need a corner unless they want to go Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, think, I'm with. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, in a couple of the mocks I did, I had them taking Dejean De- mm-hmm. here actually, but uh, I'm cool going uh, Quinion Mitchell here for the Colts. If you want to go that route, all right. Seattle is up now. Seattle to me is interesting. There was kind of a Tariq letdown last year, but there's a new DC in Mike McDonald. Does he want to go corner here? Interior offensive line on paper is a big need, and they could always use pass rushers in Seattle. I know Mike McDonald loves pass rushers as well. Letty Latu is off the board, Dallas Turner is off the board. Maybe Jared Verse is the kind of guy, but I don't know if he's sort of the Mike McDonald system type of edge. So what are you thinking here for the Seattle Seahawks? You know, it's funny. I took a look at Seattle's depth chart and I was looking, okay, they got like Jaron Reed at nose tackle. They've run this three, four. Um, they've got these, they signed Jonathan Hankins. They like, mm. I don't love their interior defensive lineman to be honest um they obviously got leonard williams in a trade from the giants but like i could see i could see like byron murphy being a guy that they mm-hmm. like here maybe um they got draymond jones i, I like draymond true um, do they want to so, pay do they want to put do they want an upgrade yeah. maybe a right tackle they have abraham lucas penciled in right now i think it'll be on the interior back. i mean it's right now it's it's nick harris and olu olu at center and it is at left guard. Who do they have? So we think left guard? JC, JC Latham maybe then could be interesting. I think that's that. a good one. I think JC Latham is a good one to slot into that left guard spot for the Seattle uh, Seahawks. Okay. I think that's a good I'm one. Good. I'm good with that. Let's go with it. And then the Bengals. To me, the Bengals, they're well, in we a... Got, well, we got Jacksonville first. Oh, we got Jacksonville first. Dang, what's Jacksonville going to do? Jacksonville. I have wide receiver, cornerback, defensive Ooh. line. Terry and Arnold, Murphy, Dijon, any of these. Nate guys. Wiggins. Nate Wiggins just screams Jacksonville Jaguar, doesn't he? He does. He does. But so does just, Terry and just, Arnold. It just feels right. It just feels Nate Wiggins to the Jaguars. Just feels right. We're doing it. Let's do it. Keep things moving. Keep things moving. I think Brock Bowers goes to the Bengals here. They got to replace Tyler Boyd. Yep. They got to get more production over the middle of the field. I think Brock Bowers makes a lot of sense for the uh, the Bengals here. Yep, yep. They signed Gasecki. Don't forget, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Brock Bowers is obviously yeah would be He's a monster like we- monster weapon for Burrow. I like mm-hmm. Bowers here as well. All right, that puts this is this is where it gets tough with the Rams. The Rams on paper they have a lot of needs, but the Rams are a weird team, right? So to, to me, me this I think. Is- a this is Verser or Murphy. Or yeah, to me, this yeah. is Verser or Murphy. Um, I think it's Verser or Murphy as well. I just don't know. I think it's going to, I think, I think Byron Murphy just makes too much sense, especially with Aaron Donald gone. Yeah. Let's go Murphy here to the Rams. Uh, man, this sucks. A lot of good, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of hopes and dreams are dying here. Uh, to okay. me, to me, Pittsburgh, obviously, they're a wild card for a wide receiver. They could take an offensive tackle. I'll tell you what. Joey Porter Jr. on one side. Did they add a corner in free agency Pittsburgh? Who's their other corner op- opposite of Joey Porter Jr.? Yeah, they traded for uh, Dante Jackson from Carolina. Dante remember? Jackson. All right. When they, in that Deontay Johnson trade, they got Dante it's, Jackson. So, Terry and Arnold seems like a, a guy who could be a Pittsburgh Steeler. But what are we thinking here? Right? They, like they got. Who's their Who's their right tackle? I I think I think tackles in play here for them. Mm-hmm. They they, they, like, have Broder- like, they have Broderick they're... Jones at the right tackle, but do they really trust Dan Moore Jr. Mm-hmm. at left tackle? Um, so who are the t- tackles still left on the board here for? I think, for us? I, I think Olu. Yeah, is an interesting one for the Steelers. I mean, P- P- Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania guy. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Olu, fine. Fresh now to the Steelers. 
All right, that leaves the Miami Dolphins up. The Dolphins are... I put tight end as a need because I thought maybe Brock Bowers could be there. Mm. Uh, offensive line is a massive need. They could take any type of offensive lineman. Wide receiver is always in play, especially speedy guys like Xavier Worthy for the Miami Dolphins. Defensive line is in play now that they've lost Christian Wilkins and they haven't really emplaced him. And then, of course, they have the two edges in. They lost Van Ginkle. They had um, Phillips, they have- Phillips okay. and Chubb both coming off of injuries. So this is this is where it gets interesting, I think, if you are um, if, with the Miami Dolphins. Graham Barton seems mm-hmm. like a Miami Dolphin type of pick. Yeah, I think that they, might be considered a little shocking to some people. But I really think a guy like Graham Barton, who's got guard center flex or JPJ, is someone that I think would be intriguing. I actually think NFL personnel will have Graham Barton higher on their boards than JPJ. I think that will be one of the differences between NFL personnel people and draft Twitter people. Because I think that that will be will be one thing. I think Graham Barton might get picked before JPJ. Yeah, and it just feels like Jared Verse has Eagles written all over him mm-hmm. uh, to me. But uh, <laughs> I th- I'll, I'll go JPJ here. They do need a center. Um, mm-hmm. Brewer, I think, is slotted in to be their center right now. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm I'm good with that because he can also play left guard. So it's either JPJ or Graham Barton, whatever you want to go with here. Mm, let's go JPJ. All right. Make things more difficult on us at 28. <laughs> Eagles. Uh, they they could always look to add to the offensive line, right? I know they have their five starters in, t- in tow, but they've always been a team that's prided themselves on having a deep offensive line, and that depth is gone because all that depth mm-hmm. is now sort of starting and filling into starting roles. They could use a wide receiver to take the, the pressure off and just try to create just a – ridiculous offense and then obviously safety i think you know reed blankenship how much do they really trust him safety was an issue last year they could use a linebacker but no one's taking a linebacker at this point in the draft i don't think it's too early for a guy, a guy like peyton wilson so cooper DeGene is a guy i think the philadelphia eagles could be interested in i think font font now is still on the board right um as a guy they could be interested in and no, uh no, he went to the oh, Saints at 13. Uh, yeah, sorry. Mim- Mims um, is available at O line. Graham Barton's available at O line. Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah. Right. That just, uh, that just seems like a Howie Roseman pick, right? <sighs> yeah. I think we have to just to yeah. take the option off the board. I think it's, oh, yeah. Tyler, I think it's, Tyler Guyton's yeah. available. He he kind of fits that Lane Johnson mm-hmm. sort of old. But yeah, uh, let's go Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah round out that receiving core with Devonta Smith and AJ Brown. That would be scary. That, so that stings for the chargers who went offensive line. Correct. At uh pick number 11, they took Fugawa. So now the chargers, Terry and Arnold might look pretty interesting to the, the chargers here. Jared verse might look interesting to the chargers here. I think it might be too early for them to take a wide receiver based on the receivers that are on the board, but but what are your thoughts here? Well, look, I mean, you have Khalil Mack, who's getting up there in age, mm-hmm. right on one edge. Joey Bosa has had his injury history, mm-hmm. obviously, and they, you know, they really need to do something and shore up a defense that has talented players, but just hasn't come up in the big mm-hmm. moments. And I feel like getting a closer like Verse makes sense if you're Jim Harbaugh and you want to really solidify your uh, both trenches, right? So you will go yeah. offensive line with your first pick. Maybe you go defensive line with this pick. I, I would be fine with the Chargers taking verse here. Yeah, go for it. Let's do it. All right. All right. So now the Cowboys are on the clock here, and Dallas has a lot of needs. Wide receiver, they could always go wide receiver. They like the flash. Mm. I think uh, offensive line is probably where their head's going to be at. They have to replace their center. They got to replace their left guard. Like right now, TJ Bass is slated to start at left guard. To me, they got steel at right tackle. They got Smith at left tackle. I think this could be Graham Barton territory. I I feel like Graham Barton is kind of in that mold of like the Zach Martins Mm -hmm. of old, as far as like that interior versatility can play tackle in a pinch or he played tackle in college. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say in a pinch, but 
it does feel like Graham Barton makes sense to the Cowboys. And for as much as they've shown that they like the flash, they have been one of the few teams, not one of Mm -hmm. the few, but they have invested in the offensive line in the past in the draft. So I would be Jerry Jones taking a reset here on that offensive line going Graham Barton. I'd be, I think that makes sense to me. Let's do it up. Sorry, that people leads, in the comments section. That leads us now to the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, they added Xavier McKinney at safety. They got Anthony Johnson Jr. at, at free safety. So this seems like a Cooper DeGene pick here. It sure does. Right? I mean, like, Savage, me, is is, Savage is gone. They got Xavier McKinney at strong safety. So they need someone. They have Eric Stokes, and they have Jair Alexander, and they have Nixon at corner. They have Anthony Johnson Jr. slated to start at free safety. To me, Cooper DeGene comes in. He's the starting free safety. He's an impact yep. player for I that agree. Green Bay Packers defense. I agree. Let's do it. All right, man. This is hurting my soul here. I know. We're making it really hard on us. <laughs> but that's fine. We wanted yeah. this to be a yeah. difficult decision. I think Tampa is probably annoyed that Jack JPJ is gone because I think mm-hmm. they would they would love to get JPJ in this spot. Couple yeah. picks for the think, Bills. I think but. they would have loved. I think they would have loved any of the interior guys. I think they would have loved any of the edge rushers. Mm-hmm. Um, cornerback seems like a need for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If I am correct here, let's go take a look at their depth chart. They have starting at corner because we have Kool Aid McKistry and we have Taron Arnold staring us straight in the face here with these. These next two picks. Also, Mims and, and Guyton, they can move Luke Goki inside. Maybe they go with one of these 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 tackles here. Um, because yeah. they can move Luke Goki from right tackle to maybe left guard. And now they just have one of these highly athletic right tackles like they had in Tristan Wirfs years ago, and he kicked over to the left side. Um, but they have right now Zion McCollum and Jameel Dean at safety with Tavir Thomas the free agent in the slot. So corner is a need for the Buccaneers as well as, in my opinion, maybe taking a tackle and kicking Goki inside could be another way they go. Cause I just don't think chop Robinson is another thing they could do here um, as well. Um, so what are your thoughts here on, on where the, the Buccaneers could possibly go? Yeah, I mean, this one's interesting. You look at the division. What kind of weaponry are they going up against in this division? You've got Olave on the Saints. Um, You've got this sort of revamped receiving core now Mm -hmm. with the Falcons and Kirk Cousins at the helm. The Panthers really are still a mess. So how much are they going to prioritize corner? I don't know. Maybe they prioritize offensive line more. Um, I'd probably lean. I'd probably lean offensive line here if I was Tampa. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would either be, it would probably be Mims then I I would assume. All right, let's go Mims here for Tampa. And then I think the Cardinals are running up to the podium and taking Terry and Arnold here with their, I think that makes a lot of sense. And that now puts the bills on the clock folks. All right. So the bills are on the clock. We have not made the decision to trade up. Brian Thomas jr. Was taken out of range. Latham, Latu versus Turner, Murphy, Terry and Arnold. Jerzon Newton, they're all gone. So Graham Barton, JPJ, gone. So if you're the Buffalo Cooper DeGene, gone. If you're the Buffalo Bills here, I mean, Chop Robinson, Darius Robinson, or wide receiver is probably where you go here, right? Yeah, and this is what makes it tough, right? Because Mm -hmm. you've got Lad McConkey staring at you in the face. You've got A.D. Mitchell. You have... Troy Franklin, right? Mm-hmm. But you also have Chop Robinson and Darius Robinson. But you also have an athletic tackle in Tyler Guyton who's available. Mm-hmm. Um, some people will probably be tempted by a guy like Tyler Newbin. I would not take him here. Um, and then you have a couple of pretty good corners in Kool-Aid McKinstry, TJ Tampa, and Mike Sainer still. Mm-hmm. So this one's tough, and I think this is the – situation that we're going to be in Braden Fisk also available by the way I think predictively I think I would maybe begrudgingly take Chop Robinson here but I think my my heart would want 
I think my heart would want McConkey or Leggett if yeah. I was in this position personally. Yeah, I think I think if this was truly how the board fell, it would be between Chop Robinson, Darius Robinson, Lad McConkey, Xavier Leggett, and Keon Coleman. And then the question then becomes, and maybe A.G. Mitchell passed the Buffalo Bills' character test, right? Maybe they're sold, and A.G. Mitchell is the easy pick here. But let's say the Buffalo Bills aren't sold on a guy like A.D. Mitchell. Man, this is tough. I this would really I would tough. be I would be fielding any phone call I yes. could at this mm-hmm. point if I was Brandon Bean and looking for a trade down. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's how probably some people in the comments section looks like they're feeling mm-hmm. as well, because this is a re- this I'm not saying it's realistic in the sense that like this is how it's gonna go, but I am saying it's realistic in the sense that you could be faced with the decision where there's a bunch of guys and you don't love one over the other more so where it's like, you'd be mm. disappointed if they didn't take one guy here. You would be like, I don't know really who they would go up to the board yeah. and take at this point. So this one's interesting. I think, man, I, I think my heart here would want to take Leggett but I know mm-hmm. that's probably too rich for some people's blood. <laughs> my, my heart says Leggett as well in this spot. So, yep. Pete says Chop or Leggett. I think Chop's the better prospect. I would probably trade down here. Yeah, I agree mm-hmm. with that. RJ, we have some AD Mitchell support. Uh, Mass saying Chop Robinson would be really tough to digest. <laughs> trade down with 49ers. Yeah, I mean, look. I mean, I guess in theory we could trade down if we wanted to, mm-hmm. or we could force ourselves into an uncomfortable pick, pick right here. So what do we want to do? I am team Xavier Leggett. All right, let's do it. People are going to yell at us, but that's okay. <laughs> let's do um, it. In a situation, I would like to trade down, but also I can't realistically sit here and think to myself like who, who the Buffalo Bills – who would want to trade up with the Buffalo Bills? Like, who's on the board right now that someone would want to trade capital for? I, I just don't don't see it. I do agree. Like with the comment section, I I agree. Like, I would like to trade down if this mm-hmm. scenario presented itself in the real draft. I would I would definitely yes. want to trade down. With that said, I would not be upset if the Bills took Xavier Leggett at that mm-hmm. pick, right? I would not be upset if they took Chop Robinson. I wouldn't be upset, upset if they took Xavier Worthy. I wouldn't be upset with a lot of picks, right? Mm-hmm. I think what we we want though is we want to try like as fans, we want them to squeeze the most value out of they can at, as they can out of that pick. And I think people realize that one of those guys would obviously be available mm-hmm. in the early to mid 30s, right? We just named like 7 to 8 mm-hmm. guys. So mathematically one of them would have to be available. So I understand where people are coming for. So, but you know, for this exercise tonight, we'll stay put and and take Leggett. All right. That leads to the Detroit lions. I'd say just give them Kool-Aid McKistry so we can get through this exercise here. Mm-hmm. Um, the Ravens, I could see them taking uh Guyton or I could see them taking chop. I could see them maybe even taking AD Mitchell looking for that X receiver. What do you think here for the Ravens? I think uh, I think chop makes sense for them. Yeah, give them so, chop. Give them chop. And then the 49ers, O-line, D-line, cornerback. I think they really need an offensive lineman. They got Colton Mikovits as their right tackle. So maybe Tyler Guyton here is a guy that they can yep. they can groom. Yep. And then the Chiefs, Chiefs are in some trouble right now with Rasheed Rice. Uh, getting into his legal issues. Obviously, they added Hollywood Brown. They could have used a tackle like Guyton. Uh, they could use a wide receiver. They could use a cornerback now with Legereus Sneed uh, no longer on the football team. So any wide receiver, offensive tackle, or cornerback, I can see Kansas City going with here. Um, let's, make, uh, uh, let's make Let's uh, make all the people that wanted AD Mitchell mad and give them AD Mitchell. <laughs> All right, how about that? The 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 Kansas City Chiefs add what they feel is a bona fide X receiver in AD Mitchell. Yeah, people are not going to be happy with us, but that's okay. Uh, there right. we go. So make sure you copy that so we can promo that and make all the people angry. So oh God, people uh, are so mad. All right, let me download this before I forget. 
Thank you, uh, ladies and ladies and gentlemen, for for sitting through this exercise with us. I know maybe some of you guys might not have agreed with some of the picks that we took, but I think that this shows you that maybe a lot of the hopes and dreams we have for trade ups and things like that, and and other and other things of that nature, maybe aren't the most realistic thing in the world because a lot of the teams in front of the Bills have a lot of similar needs in the Buffalo Bills. So it'll be really interesting to see how things actually fall come draft day because trades things can get wild right all these other various different factors things can get wild so we will be back um this thursday and we'll be talking about our favorite uh draft targets at running back it won't be a tiering episode it won't be as in depth as some of the other positions where the bills have a more significant need but on thursday night we will be back right here sharing our favorite targets for the buffalo bills at the running back position so Join us, and in the comment section, you can share with us your favorite running back targets. That would be this Thursday at 9 p.m. Dave, any final thoughts before we head out of here? No, I mean, I see some comments around, you know, where uh, Leggett was on PFF's board. Like, I'm not so worried about Mm -hmm. the the boards of different simulators right now, right? Like, I don't think it's realistic to expect that a guy like Leggett is going to be there for the Bills at pick 60. And if they don't have a trade partner and that's the guy, that's like mm-hmm. put in any other name you want. It doesn't have to be Xavier Leggett. If there's another guy that the Bills like and they don't think he's he's gonna get there to pick 60 and they don't have a trade partner, they're just gonna have mm-hmm. to take the guy at 28. So I think we just have to wrap our minds around that when it comes to the real draft that there isn't always a trade partner and you may end up having to just stay put. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Join us again Thursday night when we break down wide receivers. And until next time, go Bills. Go Bills. Thank you for watching tonight's episode of the Air Raid Hour. Make sure to hit that like button on the way out. If you are catching the show on demand, leave a reply in the comment section and we will respond over the course of the week. You can always listen to every episode next day on all major podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify by searching Air Raid Buffalo. Thank you for your continued support, and as always, Go Bills!